Hello everyone, this is Professor Kent. Today's recording is for chapter 8. Chapter 8 is inventory. So when we have an inventory, inventory is recorded as a current asset. Depending on the company, we have a different type of inventory. If you are or if there if it's a retail company, they will have they'll buy an inventory and they sell an inventory. So that will be their inventory. But if it's a manufacturing company, what they do is they manufacture a product. Um, uh, if it's a manufacturing company, they will manufacture a product. They will have a different type of inventory. The first inventory well they will have is called a raw material inventory. They purchase a material and then what they do is once they buy the material, they put it into working process and then then the next inventory is called a work in process inventory. They, they will have it. So then the next one is once the product is finished, the, this is work in process. Once the product is finished, then we call it a finished goods inventory. And then that is a inventory that is ready to sell to a customer. Then going in going further, sometimes what we have to do is uh, we have we want to know how to record some of the inventory if you uh, something we call it goods in transit how do we know that it is our inventory or the um or, or whoever we're selling it is it their inventory so when we have our goods in transit the goods that are in transit we have two things we needed to look at it when is that fob destination point and F fob shipping point and fob shipping points so that's these are the two things we have to look at fob destination and fob shipping points so soon as we ship the goods uh the title is transferred the risk and rewards are transferred we have to take the goods that we ship to them we had to take it out of the inventory and fob destination the risk and the rewards and the title is not transferred till it reaches the destination where it's supposed to reach so that is our inventory till it reaches the uh, the destination wherever it's supposed to uh, reach so the first uh, example we're going to talk about is a purchase agreement um, repurchase agreement what happens is that um, we have a company a and we have a company b uh, company a needs money company com from company b in return what we did is company a gives them the inventory in return they get a money from uh, from them so what we did is title isn't transfer all we have to do while well, all we did is we loaned them the uh, company b loan um, company a money and what what they're going to do is in, in uh, the question here is that a company a needs thousand dollars for financing but unable to borrow funds from traditional sources because the bank believes the bank the loan would be too risky the company therefore enter into agreement it's called a repurchase it's an agreement but we're going to repurchase our inventory back if that's going to if we're going to repurchase it back that means we have to pay them uh to repurchase our inventory back with this inventory we de-recognize -rec on a financial statement of company a explain a uh risk and in this case uh risk and rewards are not transferred company a still have to pay 10 uh 10 10 uh, for the invent to get the inventory back in this case uh, when company company B will give company A their inventory back in return company A is going to give them a um, thousand and ten dollars so in this case uh, the reason why uh, it is still our inventory because the risk and rewards are not uh, transferred they're just holding our inventory till we pay back them the the money that we borrowed the other one the next one we're going to deal with is purchase commitment that are uh, it's still a commitment but that are owners what does that mean um in this case company a signed several purchase contract in 2022 what we did is we signed the contracts in 2022 and what what uh, under the term of one contract the company a will take a delivery of the inventory in 2023 so what happens is b is giving them an inventory and in return what they're going to do is uh the price of this inventory uh is six hundred forty thousand. the price of the inventory is six hundred forty thousand. Uh, when we sign the contract in 2022 
the fair value of the inventory at the company at December 31st is in 2022 in December what happens is the fair value of that inventory went down by went down to 500,000 so there's a price difference between the contract the con at the time we signed the contract at the time um, our year end is what we have to do is in in uh, in 2022 uh, at the time you sign the contract there is no entry at the time you sign the contract so no entry uh, no entry at the time you sign the contract but we do have to do an entry for the year end that is december 31st on 2022 in this case we, because of the price change we're recording the inventory at a uh, fair value there's a price change in this case we have to record the 140,000. in this case it, it will be called loss on on purchase contract that is hundred and forty thousand dollars then we call it a liability for owners contract that is hundred and forty thousand dollars now comes when we take a delivery of our inventory that is in 2023 let's go go next company a does not expect to able to recover the additional costs assume the fair value remains 500,000 at the time we took the delivery so we got our inventory inventory recorded at a fair value the fair value of that inventory was 500,000 and then what we do is we could pay them cash or in this case let's say it is accounts payable and then our contract was six hundred and forty thousand dollars so we pay them the 640 in this case we took the risk and then if the price goes up the losses can be recovered if price doesn't uh, go up then we will not be able to recover the loss so then now we have no longer have that liability i have to uh, adjust my liability account liability for honors contract is hundred and forty thousand dollars so that will be my entry at the time we fulfill the contract and we receive our inventory the title is transferred um, and that's how we will record our inventory so now going further or uh, going to our next one what happens is when at the end of the year what we do is we do it a physical count of our inventory sometimes our inventory is overstated sometimes our inventory is understated we say that it takes two years for company to adjust the inventory by itself so when we do a physical count we are, if we made a mistake in the first year we're not making a mistake in the second year but then sometimes what happens is the effect what will be the effect on your net income if your ending inventory is understated so you could have an understated you could have an overstated how would you do um how would you show that how does miss statement affect the net income so when we think of it if you look at it you have seen it before you have a beginning inventory plus what you purchase equal to what you have a cost of goods available available for sale and minus your ending inventory is what we sold so ending minus your ending inventory and equal to your cost of goods sold so when you and then of course we have a sales sales minus your cost of goods sold will give me my gross profit so gross profit profit and then minus any expenses will give me my net income so what the question is asking if the ending inventory is understated or overstated what is the impact on the on the net income um in this case we're going to show you all of them in this case if your ending in inventory is understated so they are saying my under in ending inventory is my understated if it's understated by that my cost of goods sold will be over if my cost of goods in other words we didn't deduct enough if we didn't deduct enough our cost of goods sold will be over and if my cost of goods sold is over the impact on net income will be my uh, net income will be my <coughs> then what happens is that uh, 
uh, net income or net income will be under if my net income is under my retained earning is also under because whatever we close the net income to my retained earning so if one year's inventory will also be impacted the other year's inventory in this case our beginning inventory will be overstated so uh, everything will be when you do that uh, of course you needed to look at it what happened to your cost of goods sold and uh, your um, um it'll be the opposite uh, impact on the retained earning and on the um, net income so what happens is that in other words what we're trying to say is one year's inventory is impacted by the other uh, year's inventory let's put it in an example something so that we see it what happens um for the first i'm only going to do it for one year uh, to show you uh, if we put it in um, some numbers and see the impact on it if i were to do it i have a sales and then we're going to look at your beginning inventory plus your purchases uh, equal to your available uh, i'm doing a sh uh, minus your ending equal to cost of the sold um, sold and minus your expenses equal to uh, sorry my sales minus cost of the sold is my gross profit um, gross profit and then um, minus your expenses is equal to my net income let's let's assume that we don't have any income tax let's say for example my sales was hundred thousand dollars my beginning inventory i'm taking an example uh, my beginning inventory is twenty five thousand we purchased forty five thousand worth of uh, per inventory and then we have sixty five thousand um, sorry, seventy thousand worth of uh, uh, goods available for sale, and when we did a physical count, our ending inventory was twenty thousand dollars. So, ending inventory was twenty seventy minus the fifty gives me a cost of goods sold or fifty. If my sales are um, hundred minus the fifty gives me a gross profit of fifty thousand. We assume our expenses are 40,000 that gives me my income of $10,000 so this is with the mistake so what we wanted to do is with this mistake what is going to be the impact if your cost of goods sold in other words my cost of goods sold is overstated by 10 if it's overstated by 10 it my ending inventory should be 10,000 and what will be my cost of goods sold my cost of goods sold will be 60,000 uh i'm just in this case my um ending inventory is oh it is under so oh it is under not over so it's under means that the other way around i was making it over so in this case my ending inventory is under so in other words it is twenty thousand dollars so i it should have been thirty thousand dollars so that's it says under so I, I was thinking of it no, over sorry so then 70 was my available is there's no change in my available and my ending is 30,000 and that gives me $40,000 so what happened to your cost of goods sold in this case uh, like I said the cost of goods sold is my cost of goods sold uh, is over so in this case my cost of goods sold is overstated so if my cost of goods sold is over, what will be the impact on my gross profit? In this case, if I look at it, my gross profit will be 60,000. Your gross profit is also under and then minus the 40 gives me uh, 40 minus the 40,000 gives me my net income. And my net income is, if you look at it, my net income is uh, under if my net net income is under my retained earning also be under so in other words retained earning also will be under so ending of one year becomes the beginning of next year so the impact will be uh, uh your uh, in other words if you do that my end my beginning inventory will be also under my beginning inventory will also be under uh, because we only put it in 20 um, uh, uh, um, 
20,000 in our inventory, we should have a 30,000 in our inventory. So uh, that's what happens. Your What happened to your cost of the sold? And then the do, if you were to do that, you could do the same example uh, and then put it into the other one. The part here, you need to look at it, ending inventory. Uh, what is the impact on cost of the sold? What is the impact on net income? And what is the impact on your under? So in this case, if you look at it, you're comparing the both number to see the impact on your net income. So that's what we were looking at. What is the income on net income? We reported a 10,000, but it should have been $20,000. So whatever we, when we close out the net income to the retained earning, whatever the impact is on the, uh, on the net income, it will be the same impact on the, uh, on the uh, retained earning. So let's go further. What happens in this case, if your ending inventory um, is uh, understated or overstated um, and your purchases um, um, are overstated or understated, what will be the ratio uh, impact on the current ratio? When we think of a current ratio, what is the formula for our current ratio? Uh, the formula for my current ratio is, current ratio is uh, equal to my current asset equal to my current liability. So one, one if you look at it here the the inventory was understated here the the purchases and the ending inventory is correct so we wanted to know what is the impact on your current ratio if your purchases and your ending inventories are understated if i look at my current assets my current assets are 120000 my current liability is 40,000. So what that'll give you, uh, it will give me a, a ratio uh, 3 to 1. So I am going to look at the, this is when when the inventory was understated. So if your inventory was understated, that will be the impact. If your purchases and ending inventory is correct, if they are correct, what will be your current ratio? My current ratio again equal to my current assets in this case it is 160,000 divided by 80,000 gives you 2 for 1 that means my if if my current ratio is higher when the inventory and purchases are understated if it's a correct my ratio is will be lower compared to uh, compared to my uh, correct uh, um, correct, um, sorry, correct um, uh, statement. So in this case, I'm not going to talk about volume rebates. This is happens. Um, in this case, uh, what happens was you could do it on your own. Most company don't do it. Uh, the part here I wanted to do is the a comparison of a perpetual and periodic inventory. Company might be using a perpetual inventory. They might be using a periodic inventory. Uh, periodic is like just the word here pre in one period you do the adjusting entry at the end of the year perfectual you adjust your inventory as you purchase or as you sell so the question is here they're saying is can you do the entry to um can you do the uh entry to did i miss something i think i missed something um i went into perpetual let me just uh, get before to get that maybe Oh, um, I didn't want to talk about uh, rebates because most companies don't use a rebate. Um, they only, these are, uh, uh, in other words, you just have to say that if they only get a discount, if they uh, meet that quota. So you could kind of read, uh, read through your purchase perspective. The part I wanted to do is, um, in this case, I wanted to do a basket purchase. Basket purchase is like a bundle purchase. So when you bundle, you have you purchase more than one uh, inventory or you may purchase more than one uh, item. In this case, and how would you record the purchase price of, uh, uh, of that uh, purchase that you made? In this case, Woodland developer purchased land for one million. The land can be subdivided into four hundred lots. So what we did is we purchased the land. The cost of the land is one million dollars. That's what we paid. These lots are different sizes. Of course, as the size is different, the cost, uh, the selling price will be different, and the we have to record the cost according to that. 
so we have a first one we call it a graded lot graded lot a we have lot b and lot c so how many did we get we got 100 of these 100 of these 200 of these and then all together we got 400 lots that's what we did so now what happens in this case the, the selling price of lot eight so this is these are number of lots the times your selling price that will be your uh, total sales value so in other words uh, uh, unit times the price in this case the unit price is ten thousand dollars unit price is six thousand here 4500 here so what would that give me total sales value why do we need a total sale value so what we could do is we can kind of prorate it and then calculate the the cost that should be recorded uh, for each lot cost per lot so in this case if we were to do that the in this case the total sales value of your lot um, uh, total sales value of lot is our 1 million and this case will be 600,000 here will be 900,000 the total sales value will be in this case if I add all together that's the value so in other words we call it when you call a bundle basket purchase so in this case you're going to take a ratio how you do a ratio 1 million divided by the total um, sales value multiply by how much we paid in this case we paid one million dollars for this whole lot uh, we purchase land in that land we're going to get three lots then you go to your second one six hundred thousand divided by your total sales value and then multiply by why the one million that we paid and then we're going to go to the third lot which is your nine hundred thousand divided by the 2.5 million multiply by the 1 million what is this giving me this giving me the cost that should be allocated to part to lot a lot b and lot three so in this case the lot a price should be 400,000 for all the lots for price for lot b uh, the price should be 240,000 and the price uh, cost that should be allocated to all the lots in C will be 360000 If the question tells you that what is the cost per lot, so in this case, then you take the lots and then divide by the how many lots is in there. Then divide by another 100, divided by 200. What is that tells you? It tells you how much is the cost per lot. The cost per lot is 4000 here. 2400 here and 1800 here if you look at it now if i were to look at the gross profit if you look at it the gross profit the difference between the selling price per lot and the and the cost per lot will give you what the gross profit you made from the uh, each inventory from the each inventory what the gross profits you made so going further in this case uh, um, this is where it is company could use a perpetual inventory or company could use use a periodic inventory like i said previously uh, inventory under the periodic inventory gets adjusted at the end of the period under perpetual every time you purchase the inventory get updated anytime you sell the inventory gets uh, updated how do we do entry uh, for each of the transactions when we buy it for when you do a beginning inventory there is no transaction for the beginning inventory in order for us we already did a transaction to for it to arrive to that beginning inventory in this case we are going to do show you transaction under perpetual inventory system and under p t u a l perpetual inventory and under the periodic inventory system so we're going to do for the beginning inventory there is just there's no entry and doesn't matter if it's a perpetual inventory or periodic there is no entry at the for the beginning inventory but we we did a purchases there is an inventory when you purchase if it's a perpetual inventory what did we purchase we purchased 540 5400 worth of purchases when you do a purchase 
If it's a perpetual, you debit the inventory and credit, depending on if you put paid for a cash or it's on credit, let's assume that the all the purchases are on credit and the all the sales are also on credit. And here, when you're doing a periodic inventory system, what we do is we debit what will be my purchases. Credit will be my accounts payable. That will be for 5400 Going further, then what happens is that we there was some inventory that was no good. It was a defective inventory. We returned for full. Uh, in this case, it's a return. We return for full refund. Debit will be your accounts payable. Credit will be my inventory. So inventory comes in, your inventory goes up, every, you return it, inventory goes out. In this case, it will be $300. But if the company was using a periodic inventory system, what they will do is debit will be my accounts payable of $300. Credit will be my purchases return. Returns and allowance. Going further, we sold something. Of course, if you sell something, we have to record it. When you sell it, there's two inventory. If you sell, we're gonna say we record it on credit, debit the accounts AR, credit will be receivable. Uh, sorry, debit will be a receivable, credit will be my sales, $7,200. Now we want to know what is the cost of our inventory. So in this case, we would, we've been purchasing our inventory at $6. In this case, we, we sold $600 worth of uh, inventory what we're going to do is debit will be our cost of the sold and credit will be cost of the sold and credit will be my um credit will be my inventory and how much will be we sold six hundred dollars six hundred units the cost of each unit is thirty six six dollars and the value will be thirty six hundred so that's what the entry I would do at the time you sell it because what you have to do is you have to adjust your inventory at the time um, what you're going to do is at the time you are uh, selling your inventory your inventory gets updated automatically at the time you sell the inventory under the periodic inventory system of course I will this entry will be exactly the same so, uh, sorry, accounts receivable, not the cost of the sold, uh, just the accounts receivable and sales. We will have a same entry at the time you will sell it. But um, there is no entry for the cost of the sold. Now, going further, we have an ending inventory. So, this is my ending inventory. When you do an ending inventory, um, under the, I'm just going to put it in here. Um, under the I'm gonna hear her. when you're doing an adjust ending inventory we are updating the inventory as we go so if we're updating as we go what we have is we have no entry at if the company was using a perpetual inventory system but if the company was using a periodic inventory system you have to put that inventory in there in other words we call this um, as a we have to put it into our cost of the sold and how we do it with the ending inventory so in this case we know that we have twenty one hundred dollars in our worth of inventory in our inventory account so we are going to debit that inventory account uh, I'm going to put it in inventory of $2,100 so in other words we had a purchases what we have to do is you take a purchasers normally have in other words we think of a uh, you're you're going to have a cost of the sold and inventory entry uh, it is going to be uh, recorded differently so we're recording a cost of the sold so we have a cost of the sold if I were to do that I'm going to let me put the entry in here then I will talk about it we have a purchases which is your 5400 you close your purchases normal balance in the purchases is uh, 5400 and then purchase return has a credit balance in order for me to close it I will do a debit to purchase return and allowance and that will be my $300 and then what happens left over will be my uh, my inventory my inventory sorry inventory is sorry my, I have a 
inventory will be the balance in my inventory i start if you look at it inventory if this is my inventory you have a balance of six hundred dollars we have a balance of 2100 we have to adjust for what inventory we have to adjust for fifteen hundred dollars worth of the inventory so inventory account will have a fifteen hundred dollars fifteen plus the three hundred will be my cost of the sold and that will be my thirty six hundred if you want to do a periodic inventory system you can also do this so my beginning inventory was six hundred dollars and then what we did is we purchased if we purchase was uh, 5400 from there we return 300 my net purchases was 5200 I have a goods available for sale in this case it is 5800 that's the available and we have an ending inventory which is your 2100 uh, did I return 54 minus oh this should be 51 and that should be I don't have my calculator this is what happens when you, I don't have a calculator sometimes so this is 5100 and if I do a 5100 I need to sorry and 51 plus the 600 will give me uh, 5700 5700 minus my ending inventory will give me 63600 so that's what your cost of the sold is so you could if you wanted to double check if your cost of the sold is right this is the way to do it in other words what we are trying to do is we're trying to set up the inventory if you're setting up the inventory you're also recording a cost of the sold so that uh, you could calculate your in uh, net income properly going further what happens is that oh we haven't gone further i missed something here so let's do our next one what happens is if your inventory count is incorrect if the inventory count is incorrect how would you do an adjusting entry so um if and of course uh, if it's a human doing a um a, a, a uh, account we could make a mistake in this case the company uses a perpetual inventory system you, if this is my inventory account the inventory account has a balance of four thousand dollars but the actual inventory should only be thirty eight hundred dollars so in this case we needed to do an adjustment for two hundred dollars in this case if i were to i needed to do an adjustment in this case the adjustment is on the credit side if the adjustment is on the credit side if i look at it I will do an adjustment. The adjustment will be inventory account will be my credit of $200. My debit will be inventory short and over. And that will be your $200. So that's what we'll be doing it. Now what happens next is uh, we're going to do when you have a periodic inventory system or perpetual inventory system what happens is we have different type of inventory methods so this is the first one specific identification cost method means the the question or or your manager will tell you which units they want to sell it first and which will be your ending inventory so the question is asking you to calculate ending inventory and cost of goods sold using the uh, specific inventory uh, identification cost model so if this is my inventory this is your inventory that you have you purchase you sell and that's your balance now what they're saying is can you calculate the ending inventory if we tell you which inventory is left in this case we know that how do ending inventory they have to tell you in assume in addition assume that the call mart inc uh, inventory items are distinguishable and 600 of the ending inventory consist of so what happens in the ending inventory how many units we have we have unit 600 units from there 100 units are from the opening inventory so this is my beginning inventory 100 units are from there that is left so the price of those units are 380 going further 900 from march 2 purchase so march 2 purchase i am going to 900 is that the price of those is four four dollars so that will be your four dollars going further they said three thousand from march 15 the three 
3000 from march 15 the price of those is four dollars and 40 cents going further the 2000 is from your uh, last purchase which is march 30th which is 475 altogether they will be equal to 6000 inventory that we have so what we are looking for we're looking for the value of our ending inventory can we figure that out of course we could do that all we have to do is take the number the number of units times the dollar value the cost of our inventory in this case it is 3600 13200 and 9500 in this case my ending inventory if i add them together will be 26680 so i have too many sixes here so that's the my this is my ending inventory can we calculate what is the cost of goods sold of course if i have cost of goods available cost of goods available we don't need to calculate that it is given to us it is 43,800 minus my ending inventory will give me what is my cost of goods sold and that will be your inventory for your cost of goods sold and that will be your 17,120 now um, you have seen them before I'm not going to sit here and show you that the next one is weighted average cost and they're using a periodic inventory system if they you take the same example what we're going to do is we know that there's 6000 inventory if i want i'm going to if i show you just this one let's show you a weighted average so in this case if you have a weighted average and they are using a weighted average and they what they're doing is they are using a periodic inventory system so what we have to look at it what is my ending inventory and what what is my cost of goods sold and we already know we have it available for sale so in this case we have available for sale are 43,800 how many units we have in this case we have 10,000 units so if I were to look at that what is the unit price per unit what is the weighted average cost per unit if i have a 43800 available i have num 10 th this is the dollar value for inventory um i have 10000 units the value of our in inventory is $4.38 so that's the value of our inventory uh, which is four dollars and thirty eight cents they told us my ending inventory is six thousand dollars times the four dollars and thirty eight cents and the value of that inventory is twenty six thousand two hundred eighty that gives me cost of goods sold and that cost of goods sold will be one seven five two zero so that will be the weighted average inventory system of course the company could be using a perpetual inventory system when it's a perpetual inventory system what you have to do it is that um, you have to every time you purchase or sell what you have to do is you have to do calculate the price per unit and that is called a moving average so that is called a moving average you have to go into a date order um, you could uh, I'm sure you have done it before um, if uh, what I'm going to do is uh, maybe I could show you one in this case let's to show you the one so in this case I'm going to show you one uh, the moving average how do we do that because every time you purchase or every time you sell you need to keep a running total of your inventory that's what we're going to do we need to keep a running total of our inventory in this case if I have a beginning inventory my beginning inventory is 500 times the 380 I haven't sold any and that is my balance so if I didn't sell anything I this will be my um, inventory that I have left and I'm going to the price here is 1900 then what we have is we go to our March second what we did is we purchased 500 units at four dollars here what we're going to do is you have to keep a running total of it if you keep a running total of it you add both inventory in this case the two thousand dollar and here was nineteen hundred 
here was six thousand dollars so what you're going to do is you're going to add them together in this case the value of the inventory is 7900 and then what will if you were to sell it today you're got the price per unit will be 7900 divided by 2000 gives you per unit cost that will be your uh, three dollars and 95 cents so if i have to sell the inventory the cost of the inventory will be three dollars and 95 cents so that's will be your inventory so if i were to do it you could do it at the balance or you could do it here uh, either one will give you the same answer so in this case i every time you purchase or you can sell you have to kind of adjust your inventory in this case it was 1500 times the four I will put it in here times the four gives you six thousand and just like the way I showed you two thousand the price of the inventory is three ninety five equal to your seventy nine hundred now I didn't I purchase another inventory if you purchase another inventory times the four forty equal to twenty six four hundred and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it here because that's my purchases I didn't sell it till here so that will be four dollars and forty cents twenty six thousand four hundred before i do anything i add these to, to make it one this is number of units if i add these two numbers and that will give me a total of thirty four thousand uh three hundred and then i'm going to take the thirty four thousand three hundred divided by your eight thousand unit that gives you per unit cost and then it is 4.2875 so now i'm ready uh to uh to sell how much did we sell we sold 4000 units so i'm going to take another ink so in this case we have to keep a running total when did we sell it march 19 how many units we sold we sold 4000 units the price that we are going to sell it at 428 seven five that's what we were going to sell it and then what will that give me it gives me cost uh the, the this will give me uh sorry um i'm just trying to work it out on my calculator um uh, i don't have a number i'm trying to use my phone to calculate use the calculator so we have four thousand times your four point two eight seven five and that is seventeen thousand one fifty so seventeen thousand one fifty so we sold four thousand so we are left with four thousand uh, at four dollars two eight seven five equal to seventeen thousand one fifty now we did another purchase and that purchase is on on that purchase is on march 30th march 30 what did we purchase we purchased two thousand unit at four dollars and seventy five cents which is equal to ninety five thousand so now what we're going to do is two thousand at four dollars and seventy five cents equal to your ninety five hundred now i have to do another total to get my ending inventory so this will be your ending inventory so at and now i have to add these two numbers and those two numbers are twenty six thousand six hundred and fifty if I take twenty six thousand six fifty divided by my six thousand dollars, what that will give me per unit cost four 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 one seven. So that will be the cost. If the question says that what is my ending inventory? Sorry, what is the value of your ending inventory? In this case, the value of your ending inventory is um, twenty six thousand six hundred and fifty. What is your cost of goods sold? Your cost of goods sold is seventeen thousand one fifty. So this is what I showed you is a moving average. So again, uh, the book is asking you to do a periodic inventory system for FIFO and FIFO under perpetual inventory. So what you're going to do is I'm going to leave it for you to do it. And if you have questions, you can uh, send me a message underneath this video. I can re I can do the question for you and show you how to do it our next one when it comes to an inventory is some companies what they do is they do an invent they record their inventory at something called apply it lower of cost and uh, net value it could be recorded as an individual inventory 
or could be recorded as a group or, or as a category so in this case we have a how do we do and whole purpose of this is to record an inventory so if we have a um if they're using lower the word here is lower of cost and net realized value this is the cost of the inventory that's the net realized value and this is a lower of the both in this case individual so my cost was 80 my net realized value was 120 which is the lower the lower is 80,000 so that's what the 80,000 is for the carrot cost was 100 this is 100 they both are same it doesn't matter which one we pick here is cut beans net realized value was lower so we put that there so when we have a piece net realized value is lower that's what, what the uh, we put it as a lower cost of net value mixed vegetable we have 92,000 which is net realized which is lower all together any any inventory you have it sits at the cost in your books if it's sitting at the cost this is the cost of the inventory and when you were to do it this will be the inventory that will be uh, reported on your lower cost of uh, uh, under the lower cost of net realized value so that's what you will be recording it and sometimes they ask you to do a journal entry difference between the both you will do an entry but they're not asking you to do an inventory what they want you to do is they want you to recognize what is the what is the amount under the um uh, under the net realized value so under the lower cost and net realized value sometimes these are done just for uh, individual purposes to see uh, uh, what uh, should be reported on your um, on your financial statement in other words what you're going to do is this will be reported on your statement of financial position so uh, if it was if you were to do that you add them together if you had to do an adjusting entry you could do an adjusting entry in this case what they're doing is they're not asking you to do an adjusting entry what they want you to do is if you were to record this inventory uh, what will be what you will be recording it at this point so uh, you will be recording it what will be the amount of your inventory in the case case the amount of the inventory will be 384 that should be reported on your financial statements so what happens is sometimes we are grouping it together they will tell you what the grouping is so you could have in this case the first group is your frozen which is spinach carrots and cut beans so this goes in one category what category of what category is that it is called a frozen the second category is we have canned which have peas and mixed vegetables so we have two categories so in this case we could do under the category so we could do it under individual under the category so when you're doing it under the category and then what you're going to do is you're going to be adding them together to find out uh, what is your frozen so i'm going to put it in a frozen here we have 80 150 all together that is 230,000. that's the cost of that when i do a net realized value i put them together 120 140 that is 260 when i do a frozen the lower of the both as a as a group is 230,000. then we're going to go to our canned uh cut canned uh, and canned under the cans we have peas and we have mixed vegetables so in this case 90 and 95 72 and 92 if i add them together that is 185 if i add them together it is 164 the lower is 164 so if i had to record our inventory then it will be 49394 so i will record my inventory at 394000 so that's how would you do it under grouped and with a category so we just wanted to do the inventory amount we don't want you to do any adjusting entry till we get go further so in this case what happens in this we're going to be recording it and now we have to kind of uh, doing an adjusting entry and what if we were using a periodic inventory system and what if we were uh, using under the periodic we could be using a direct method or a uh, allowance method so in this case we have an inventory at cost inventory at rec, uh, net realized value 
so we have a beginning inventory and we have an ending inventory so in this case what are the journal enter using a direct method and an allowance method so we are going to do both in this case we are using a direct method we're doing an allowance method so what happens in this case how do we do our adjusting entry so in this case company uses a periodic inventory system and then we have um, we are we have something called the uh, uh, um, inventory they want you to do an inventory at cost in this case first what we're going to do is we're going to look at our beginning inventory so we have an inventory how do we set it up in other words how do we transfer the beginning inventory balance so how do we transfer the beginning ba inventory balance if it was my inventory balance so uh, i'm going to do is the in other words what we have is we have uh, when you have a beginning inventory we purchased and then you have an ending inventory what we did is we sold when you sell something what we're going to do is we are going to do cost of goods sold and we're going to do an inventory so in this case the uh, when you when you're doing a lower of cost and net real as well they both are same if they both are same my entry will be for the sixty five thousand dollars so we debit the cost of goods sold take the inventory out we sold it now we have an something called the ending inventory ending inventory in this case if you when we take a lower of cost and net realized value what is the lower and because the lower amount is seventy thousand if they were using a direct method we have to put that seventy thousand in my inventory account in this case i will put seventy thousand worth of inventory in there and then i will take it out of cost goods sold which is your seventy thousand so in this case the difference between is your uh, the inventory between the uh, lower of uh, cost and net realized value so they're using lower of cost and net realized value uh, using the uh, direct uh, method now we're going to go to our allowance method so when you're doing an allowance method for the beginning to transfer the beginning inventory balance what we are doing is debit the cost of the sold which is seven sixty five thousand and we have an inventory which is my sixty five thousand under the allowance the there's an extra entry and then we still going to reach to that um under the allowance method so when you have an allowance method what we're going to do is we record everything under the uh under the cost so first we're going to record our ending inventory uh for, that's the inventory we have it sitting there so if i have a sitting there i'm going to debit the inventory and credit will be my um uh, credit will be my cost of goods sold so that if there was if the allowance method was used now what we have to do is we needed to there's a lower of the both is 70000 and we needed our ending inventory to be 70000 so we needed to do an adjustment for 12000 and when we do an adjustment for 12000 of course we wanted to hit the balance sheet and we wanted to hit the income statement how do we hit the uh, our statement of financial position we call it allowance for uh allowance to reduce the uh inventory so we're going to say allowance to to reduce inventory and we needed it uh, we need to adjust for the twelve thousand. and debit we will have to put it in as a lost on inventory due to to decline in nrv so that will be for 12000 so this this will go to my income statement and this will sit hit on my uh, inventory and it will be a contra account to your inventory so this will have the statement of financial position the company could technically be using the uh, write-off uh, the direct method if they were using a uh, 
uh, this was a, if they were using a periodic inventory system but the company could still also be using a perpetual inventory system and what do we do in that case so in this case what do we do for that case so in this case they both are same under the um, 65,000 they bo both inventories are same we don't need to adjust for anything we all we have to do is do an empty inventory at the end of the year in this case we have a direct method and we have a, an allowance method and what we are doing is, is this is for perpetual inventory system so what we have is we have to do an adjustment for 12,000 the entry will be exactly the same under the allowance method if it was a perpetual we're just adjusting our inventory the entry will be called loss on inventory due to to decline in nrv and that is due at twelve thousand dollars and then we have an allowance to reduce inventory that is your uh, sorry twelve thousand under the direct method of, and in order to record an inventory all we have to do is debit the cost of the sold for twelve thousand dollars and credit will be your inventory all we have to do is take out the twelve thousand from the inventory direct accounts are always nice the only one is that if we don't have a direct then it's just uh, uh, we have an extra account that we needed to do um, uh, in in this case uh, now going further now what happens is that sometimes what we have to do is how do we record the byproducts so these are something called byproducts in this case what we have are the sheep uh, are the sheep a biological asset or is um, is the wool so which one is it if of course sheep is a biological asset um, and wool is a byproduct from the wool so in this case what happens let's see what they happens and they want you to do a journal entry for each of the transactions that's what they want you to do so wool right limited is a farm that raised sheep for their wool so you have a sheep you use that sheep to uh, get a wool wool will be byproduct from sheep um, that's what will be sheep is a biological asset and wool is a byproduct asset uh, byproduct of sheep during the year the following transaction occurred a lamb was born the fair value less cost um, was $500 it will only be held to produce wool the farm is prepared to support this assume no cost incurred at the time the birth of this lamb so what if you were to do uh, record a transaction how would you record a transaction of course we have to, company could be IFRS company and company could be an SP company in this case did they ask us which one to do uh, yes they're asking did they say no in this case they did not ask they told us they follow SP but they could be following an IFRS let's let's oh the instructions they told us in this here um, they want you to use IFR and SP so let's do both to make our life a little bit easier so then we only have to do it at once so in this case our first transaction is now the lamb is born so if the lamb is born so what we have is we have a biological asset so we will call it by logical asset and then what we do is in this case uh, if biological assets are recorded uh, in this case lamb is born they recorded at a fair value in this case we have we had no value now the biological asset is the value of biological assets went up if it went up we have a something called unrealized gain slash loss of 500 dollars aspi does not recognize the fair value and they will have no entry here no entry it doesn't apply to them so number two in other words it's not a no entry it does not apply asp doesn't do the fair value so going so further general farm expense incurred uh, uh expenses were incurred were 200 dollars. assume there is no direct cost so what we did is we paid for some of the farm expenses so you could call it supplies or farm expenses whatever you want to call it supplies or farm expense in this case we paid I would think if we paid it I will do a cash 
in this case cash will be two hundred dollars so what we're going to do is we have to do an entry uh, it will be a same entry under the ASPE going third the value of the lamb and the other sheep increased by 70 so whatever our biological asset was sitting was 500 now they up gone up in value if they're gone up in value we have to record another uh, biological biological asset gone up by 700 dollars not two is buy so unrealized gain slash loss in this case seven hundred dollars so there this is not applicable to, to my aspi company now going further so the wool now what we did is we we have the lamb and the other sheep so what we do is we produce wool from them now the value of your wool is been produced now we have an inventory so in this case and then what we did is they're ready uh, no were produced from sheep marker price readily determinable no cost of disposal and the wool is ready to sale the company uses a net realized value model for an ag agriculture product for their inventory so what they're doing is now what they're going to do is they're going to record our inventory we are going to record this inventory in this case the inventory is your hundred hundred dollars right that's what the value of your inventory and then what we had to do is uh, from there, we had to take out from your biological assets. And that will be 100. Now we have to kind of uh, do the entry here. If when you do the entry here under the ASPE, and that's when we are going to record our inventory of $100, and we are recording an unrealized gain slash loss of hundred dollars now if when we sell it so you sold it you the cost was hundred you sold it hundred in other words what we're going to do is debit the cost and credit will be your inventory so let's record the sale debit will be your cash credit we get rid of the inventory in this case it is a hundred this is a hundred in this case we will have a same entry And we have an unrealized gain and that unrealized gain becomes the realized gain so I will have an unrealized and that becomes a realized we have to pay taxes on that <coughs> it will be same entry under the ASPE so that's what we did so uh, the next uh, next topic is sometimes when we record our inventory uh, depending on the company we estimate our estimate our inventory using a gross profit method so that's, that's what we do uh, we use a gross profit method to look to estimate the inventory why do we need to do that because um, sometimes what happens is Sometimes what happens is that our inventory is lost or maybe there's a fire in our warehouse. If that happens, what we need to do is we have to tell the insurance company. Then we estimate our inventory according to uh, the estimate formula. So how do we estimate the inventory? In order for us to do that, we have something called a beginning inventory beginning inventory is 60,000. We already have invoices for that because we purchased them. And then we have a purchases that was two hundred thousand. We are it used to be called cost and retail. So this is the cost of those uh, those inventories. And then what we have is something called cost of goods available for sale. Cost of goods available for sale. And this is at cost. 260,000 so then what we did is we sell sale is at retail what we did is we sell our sales if you look at it our sales is 280,000 they told us the gross profit on that uh, on that uh, sales minus gross profit 
gives you a uh, gross profit gives you a cost of goods sold a gross profit gives you a cost of goods sold and from there we could figure out what my ending inventory is at the cost so how do i get a gross profit they told us our gross profit is 30 percent so if my sales is two hundred eighty thousand dollars on that my gross profit is 30 percent so in this case the value of my gross profit will be eighty four thousand difference between the both will be cost of goods sold in this case my cost of goods sold is hundred and ninety six thousand and if that is my cost of goods sold and what does that do it will give me my and estimated ending inventory estimated and that will be your 64,000 and that will be my ending inventory so that will be my co uh, estimated ending inventory of course when we have a and next next example is um gross profit percentage versus percentage of markup on cost so when we buy anything what we do is we have a markup so what we do is we mark up the cost so that we can make the profit of course when you want to gross profit you want to make a profit you want to know how to calculate uh, depending on what is given to us if the cost if your cost is 15 dollars and we're selling it for 20 dollars we made a profit of five dollars so we want to know if somebody five dollars per unit right but so if somebody asks you what is the the gross profit percentage in this case how do we get to calculate the gross profit percentage so of course we know our gross profit is five dollars and what is the the selling price the selling price of our products is fifteen dollars so if i take five divided by fifteen percent it will be gives me what is the gross profit the gross profit is 25 percent of the selling price that's what happens and then saying what is the what is the markup if i would need to know what is the markup um, markup is, is saying do two calculation one based on the selling and one based on the cost if i were to do that on the markup um on the on the cost what is the markup on the cost i have a gross profit which is my five dollars the cost was my uh, no the cost was 15. no the cost is now 15 the cost yeah the cost is 15 sorry i was saying 20. so did i do this wrong yeah that's this i did it incorrect the selling price here is twenty dollars the cost is 15 and that gives me 33 one third percent of the cost i didn't so the formula here is gross profit divided by the cost here gross profit divided by the selling price so the, this is this gives you gross profit um uh, gross profit and here this will give you your markup uh, this is the markup that gives you so now what happens sometimes is that um, this is sort of a multiple choice question could be uh, when you think the markup on the cost on a specific item is 25 percent and the selling price is one dollar what is the gross profit on the selling price it's just a one formula so in this case we wanted to know what the selling price is if i have a selling price plus my gross profit equal to my selling price but if i don't know what the cost is but i know markup cost we know the markup cost is 25 percent, but we don't know what it cost us in this case we have a cost which is your c plus your 0.25 of the cost equal to your selling price which is your dollar you're solving for your c how do i solve for c in this case is 125 c equal to your dollar your C is equal to one dollar divided by your one twenty-five, and that is your eighty cents. So that's what they're saying. Uh, in this case, the question is asking what is the dollar value um, of your um, what is the uh, gross profit of your um, 
what sorry what is the gross profit on the selling price the gross profit on the selling price again you have to do it in two formulas and the first one you calculated the cost and then once you calculated the cost what you're going to do is you're going to look at your gross profit and if i were to do that how do we have a sales minus what the cost is equal to my gross profit so what will be that selling price is dollar the cost is 80 cents the gross profit is 20 cents so that will be that if i will say what is you what is the percentage of gross profit your sales are always at 100 percent. so sales will always be 100 percent. your gross profit will be uh, 0.20 divided by one in this case it is a 20 percent. so that will be your gross profit now the uh, the next next one is just the in other words they want you to just do an inventory turnover ratio how do we do an inventory we want to know how fast are we selling uh, our inventory how fast our inventory is turned in this case we have a formula the formula for inventory turnover is cost of goods sold divided by average inventory so when we do it when we say an average inventory we take our beginning inventory and we add the ending inventory and what we do is divide by two to get an average so that's what they let's see what the question is telling us we know our cost of goods sold in the fiscal year is 84 81 our beginning inventory was 3404 plus your 3376 divided by 2 and what that will give you how many times our in, uh, inventory turnover is 2.5 uh, that makes it that an average uh, if you think about it if I were to say that that inventory is always presented in times in this case if they say how many times your inventory how long does it take you to uh, turn your inventory in within a year so then in this case it will be 365 divided by your 2.5 will give you in days in this case it takes you 146 days to sell the inventory so it takes you 160 days uh, to sell your inventory for it so that's what happens um, now depending on the company uh, is this a good ratio no well if it's a if it's a fruits and uh, um, fruits and milks and stuff they go very bad very quickly if you're not selling it within the time frame uh, they will go bad and the company will lose a lot of money but if it was something else um, then it would be a good number right so at this point we don't know what kind of industry the company is and that depends on the industry if that depends on the industry then what you have to do is you have to kind of think of it no number is a good number tell you know what what type of industry the company is dealing with so that's what you have to uh, deal with in this case we are done with the chapter 8 if you have any question I know I did not do a FIFO inventory under perpetual and periodic I skipped that the other one I skipped was the rebate if you want me to do those questions or do those examples send me a message uh, underneath the video I will record another video for those two examples Thank you so much for listening to me. Take care and have a good one.